Hey there, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about glycoproteins. Now the glycoproteins are different than proteoglycons. You can watch my video on proteoglycons in the link that I have provided in the description below. And also the link is appearing on the right upper corner now. Now how glycoproteins are different than proteoglycons? Glycoproteins basically they contain different carbohydrate units and they, it will be carbohydrate chain here it will be highly branched whereas in proteoglycans carbohydrate chain is a long linear repeating disaccharide and also they comparing the protein content in glycoproteins compare that with the proteoglycans glycoprotein protein content is much more than the proteoglycans now glycoproteins most of the proteins in our body are glycoproteins you can take any example of a protein so it will be attached with the carbohydrate unit so that's a glycoprotein so glycoproteins are present in the intra within the cell or outside the cell now let's see what kind of carbohydrates are attached to glycoprotein molecules now the carbohydrate units that are attached to glycoproteins they all come in as nucleotide sugars now the meaning of nucleotide sugar here so nucleotide sugar the nucleotide sugar is they will be coming in as uh, udp sugar udp is a nucleotide udp that is uridine diphosphate so the uridine diphosphate associated sugars that are added on to glycoproteins are like we have udp glucose UDP galactose, UDP N-acetyl glucosamine and UDP N-acetyl galactosamine all of these molecules they will come in to the protein molecule uh, to make a glycoprotein as UDP sugars or nucleotide sugars then some of these sugars they will come in as GDP they will be bound with the GDP guanosine diphosphate and they are mannose like GDP mannose and fucose that is uh, GDP fucose and some of the sugars they will be added on to glycoprotein as CMP sugar that is CMP nano. Nano is an N-acetyl neuraminic acid. Other name for nano is acyalic acid. Now this is how sugar units will be added on to a protein molecule to make a glycoprotein. Now depending on where exactly the sugar units are added so we can have two types of, li two types of linkages in a glycoprotein molecule and that is O-linkages. So in O-linkage, in O-linked glycoprotein, usually the amino acid that is accepting the pro uh, carbohydrate is either serine, threonine or tyrosine. These are the three amino acids, serine, threonine, tyrosine. These are hydroxyl containing amino acids. They will accept the carbohydrate onto a protein molecule. So that's how the O-linkages are created. And the O-linked sugars, they are added one after the other. So there will be a sequential addition of sugar in it. Sugar in it will come in as nucleotide sugars like UDP, glucose, UDP galactose. So they will be added one after the other by a specific glycosyl transferases. That's how the O-linkages are created. Now the N-linked gly uh, glycoproteins, how they are created. Now the N-linked glycoproteins are created by the help of a molecule called dolichol pyrophosphate. Now dolichol, dolichol PP, this dolichol pyrophosphate, it is a lipid molecule. Dolichol pyrophosphate is attached to the inner side of the luminal, basically the luminal side of this membrane, endoplasmic reticular membrane. So by attaching the dolichol pyrophosphate, it is going to accept carbohydrate units. So basically what kind of carbohydrate units are accepted here. So initial carbohydrate unit that is added, uh, added to dolichol pyrophosphate is N-acetyl glucosamine. You can see NAC, glucnec, N-acetyl glucosamine added to one of the phosphate there. Like that sequentially the other glu uh, glucose units basically the carbohydrate unit will be added so it will be say one more N-acetyl glucosamine is added and then nine mannose units are added later nine units of mannose and three glucose units are added so in total 
two N-acetyl glucosamine, nine mannose, and three glucosinates are added. So this is the sufficient lengthening of carbohydrate. All these things will be going on over the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. So once this unit is built here, this entire carbohydrate unit, this is an oligosaccharide which is built there. So a specific protein oligosaccharide transferase will come and it is going to break this bond here. So this entire unit, it will be transferred to a protein molecule, especially asparagin, amino acid asparagin, which has got uh, side chain amino group. So uh, this entire unit will be added to asparagin residue on a protein molecule. And that's how N-link linkages are created. So N-linked glycoproteins are synthesized by building a carbohydrate unit onto dolichol pyrophosphate once a sufficient unit is built. So what is sufficient unit? It is two molecules of n glucosamine, nine molecules of mannose and three molecules of glucose. This is the sufficient oligosaccharide unit. Once that unit is built, so that entire unit N mass is transferred from here onto asparagine residue that is amino side chain amino group of asparagin accepts it and create the N-linked glycoproteins. So this is how N-linked glycoproteins and O-linked glycoproteins are synthesized. So once this N-linked glycoprotein is synthesized here and O-linked glycoproteins are synthesized in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, they will move into Golgi complex, further processing will go on to a carbohydrate unit and then they will be, they move into trans-Golgi and from transcology, they will go out as a secretory vesicles. This is how we synthesize and secrete glycoproteins. Now, how these glycoproteins are targeted to different cells, or different uh, sorry, different subcellular organelles are going out of the cell. Now, for targeting of a uh, glycoprotein that is synthesized over the endoplasmic reticulum, going into endoplasmic reticulum lumen and then going into Golgi complex and ultimately targeted to different subcellular organelles including the cell membrane or outside, it needs a chemical marker. So the each organelles, they have their own chemical markers. So these proteins which are synthesized here in the endoplasmic reticulum uh, or the surface of endoplasmic reticulum, they will be marked with a specific chemical marker which will target them to a specific subcellular organelle. This is what is protein targeting. Like a protein which is meant to go for peroxisome, so there is a peroxisomal targeting sequence. A protein which is meant to go nucleus, we have a nuclear localization signal. Protein that has to go into the endoplasmic reticular membrane, we have a, a, pe a pro uh, peptide sequence that is they, that will take it into lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. And also protein which is uh, meant to go to lysosomes, we have a chemical marker called mannose 6-phosphate. And this mannose 6-phosphate is important chemical marker because any protein, any enzyme that has to reach lysosome, so it should be marked with a chemical marker that is mannose 6-phosphate. So this mannose 6-phosphate is kind of acting as a PO box number for lysosome. So any protein that has to go there, so it should have this mannose 6-phosphate. One of the enzymes that is involved in uh, creating this mannose 6-phosphate chemical marker over proteins that are meant to go to lysosome and that enzyme is glucnac phosphotransferase GLCNAC that is N-acetyl glucosamine phosphotransferase so this N-acetyl glucosamine phosphotransferase or glucnac phosphotransferase is one of the enzyme involved in addition of chemical marker to, uh, to proteins meant to go for lysosome if there is any defect in a gene coding or if there is a mutation in a gene coding for uh, glucnac phosphotransferase or n glucosamine phosphotransferase, so it will give rise to a defective enzyme and it will give rise to a disease called eye cell disease or inclusion cell disease. I have a video on inclusion cell disease or eye cell disease. Uh, I have given the link for that in the description below and also the, the link for that is appearing in the upper right corner right now. This is the overview about glycoproteins, uh, how uh, two different types of glycoproteins based on the linkages and the different types of carbohydrates that you can see in uh, glycoproteins. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below and I will answer them as quickly as possible. See you in my next video.